Can get your water. Yeah. And we back again. Okay. Back at it like a bad habit. If you want something, go grab it. What's up, Cam? We back. Atypical. Mm-hmm. Hello. Slipping. Podcast. Podcast. All right. What's up with it, baby? How you been? Uh, good week? It's been a good week. Went and Do me a favor. Shut that door, baby. Go and slide. Slide. Yeah. Slide to the right, baby. Uh, yeah. Oh she my, closed do now. Do not use that phrase. Slide to the right. That's like that... Uh, What's that mean? The, I was talking about the door. I was I was thinking about no because of that song that they play at middle school dances. What? Slide I don't know nothing right. about no. Slide to the left. Oh, they don't play that at middle school. They they play that anywhere. That's the cha cha slide. That's the the overplayed slide. Cupid shuffle. Cupid shuffle's good. Now damn. Cha cha slide not so much. Yeah, I'm with you. I don't think they play that anywhere. I think they only played that in elementary school, middle school. Because who's doing the Charlie Brown in like their thirties? <laughs> I mean, they play it at weddings, bro. Yeah, I've been crashing they're really, a lot of weddings. They're really white weddings. No, I've been crashing a lot of weddings, bro. And whoa, I have... whoa, whoa, whoa! I need a little bit of love over here, baby. Well, okay. You just messed up the whole flow. No, nah, people like it. Nah, they get a little yeah, bit there's literally there's no there's no cuts. It's like all raw footage. Mm-hmm. I love it. I a lot remember, of podcasts are like that. Uh, well, I don't know if they're adjusting the camera mid. Oh, yeah, bro. You Who's know how many podcasts like I, when I'm making these clips and stuff. You know how many podcasts that have like bad audio or like the camera shaking. Like I guess a lot. Yeah. I mean, you're making it sound like it's a common thing. Yes, very common. We're podcasts are a little. So we're not unique. We are, because our shit doesn't have a lot of that in it. <laughs> so, Any moment that I start to do weird shit, yeah. you are... I'm right on Yeah, I'm on top your OCD of, pops in. And then I, I have think, OCD in a different way. Yeah, I would say... Well, cause before, but it works before, together. Yeah, before anybody comes out here and says, you don't have OCD, you're just a perfectionist. I don't know if you know how it works. I have to think... Things are in order in a way to where they're repeatable for me. I don't. I don't care if it's organized. I want it to be repeatable, and like, before I leave my house, I will go back inside and make sure my door is shut. I shut it. I know I shut it before I left, but I want to shut it again to make sure it's shut. It's so weird why I do it, but it's just something. I, no one's gonna break in my room. Everybody knows not to go in my room, especially with shoes on. No one. Everybody knows the rules, but I still go shut it anyways. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why. But he, him. His is, you're kind of the same way, but your OCD is more like uh It's different, but it's... It's like everything's organized. Like, if you came into this room... But it's you would, static. Like, I don't want to move it. Like, a yeah, while yeah. ago, like, taking that off the thing, like, I just want it to be there forever. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. want to touch it. Yeah, exactly. Make it easier on yourself. That way it's repeatable, like you said. Yeah. Like, so we have the same goal, but I do it a lot different. I think I actually might have, like, I've, I've never Like, been you will tinker with it, and I'm like, bro, we ain't moved it. No, but I gotta, you know what I mean? But I, my OCD is like, get it in place and just let it be like yeah, that. But I have to go back forever. and check it again. But at the that's same time, thing. I also like that because like that's how you improve things. So like, hey, we have had it there for a month, but let's move it over here and see. You know, <laughs> so it's like, I do like that too. So I don't know. They it's because I, I, it's cause I create these visuals in my head. I like come up with these stupid POVs in my head like, this could happen or... This might happen, or this would be better if this happened, man. and that's why I have to mess with so much stuff. You did jink us, though, or jinx. Is, is the word jinx or jinkies? Jinx. Is it jinkies? Jinkies is what Velma said. You jinkies! J- yeah, you jinkies does when you... <laughs> See, when you came in, you said, man, it's going to go absolutely perfect. So why? <laughs> well, why'd you say that? And then we had battery issue. Yeah, First my, five minutes. It's not my fault. You set us up for it's it. It's not my fault. The battery heard that and said, <laughs> I'm dying now. <laughs> it's time to die. There he said, peace out. <laughs> all right, peace out. Serve my scout. purpose for these 10 minutes. Yeah. Hey, but we all have slow starts. But speaking of change-ups, I've changed your hairstyle. I, Got a little Leo DiCaprio I, going I, on. I think I wore my hat backwards this time compared to last week. But I'm about, about to it. grow the hair out, out. Mm. I'm going to try to rival you. I don't know how long it's going to get. but Mine's going to stay longer. I, yeah, I'm um one last hurrah before I shave it. I'm gonna let her grow out, baby, and then zzz, I'm gonna rock the shaved head. So I got. Man, you're like, really gonna be McConaughey. 
like a year and a half. Why? The long hair? <laughs> yeah, he's got like this. <laughs> yeah. I don't sound like Matthew McConaughey. Poll in the comments. Do I sound like Matthew McConaughey? I don't outside, hear it. Outside, outside, Yeah, I mean, if you say a trigger word, I feel like anybody could sound like anybody if you like pick up one phrase. But people be saying that even when I'm not saying, like, all right. Like, if I say all right, yeah, that... That okay. is, but that's, like, you don't try to sound like them. You just sound like them when you say it. You can't sound exactly like somebody unless you're trying to do an impression. Sorry about that, guy. <laughs> this guy know. never mutes his phone, never turns down his volume. Me, on the other hand, volume is always down. Usually I have it all the way down. I don't know why I even had it on at all. Listen, I gotta be able to get shaking, you know? I gotta get it moving. You just woke everybody up. YouTube who fell is asleep. popping right now. Okay? Everybody, everybody who was fell, falling asleep to our podcast just woke up. Hey, we'll, we'll listen. YouTube's popping right now, so I gotta stay on it. Doesn't matter. Popping people out of, your, out of their bed while they're watching it. Listen. We just gotta you get got it. it all the way up still. <laughs> You probably turn it All right, look, I'm the guy that has like alarms for everything. Yeah. Because I want to remember when to do stuff. So, I don't want to forget. I want it to be habit to where then I don't even have to think about it. For someone with such a strict, well, not a strict routine, but someone who's so routine, you wouldn't need alarms, do you think? I mean, I think um, as much have... as I'm also a routine person, I'm the type of person that um, I can get lost in the sauce. I think you're just going to have like really bad trauma when you're older. Every time you hear that old arm sound, you're just going to think, <laughs> I'm going to go to the gym. And oh, you're going to realize that you're like 75 and can't do it, like move. Yeah, true. If, if I the think earth um, is still a thing. But you know what I mean? Like, you can get lost in the sauce. I think sometimes, like, I'm the type of person I focus really hard on something. Mm-hmm. And then I can just, like, lose track of time. Oh, yeah. Like, uh. That's earth. why I got to have the alarm. Because, like, I'll just get lost in it. I won't realize that I've been doing something for 12 oh, hours. Oh, yeah, you have your days. And hat and eight. You have your days every day. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's something that we mentioned in the last episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, I don't care. If I'm really working on something and I'm into it, I might as well just get it done. I, I like the whole di- the, hi- the idea of doing it hourly by the days, like having a, a day every day. Like, this is Monday's work today, yeah. and Tuesday's is later. Yeah, I understand that, but... If I'm like, I'll forget meals. I will forget to eat if I'm That's really me. into something. And who forgets to eat more? I would say. <laughs> well, well, let's let's be honest. This is the second time I've been 190, and so I've always just been heavier ever since my first bulk. It was really hard for. I got down to 160. That's crazy. I've I haven't been been in the 157 or the, I haven't been in the 150 since I was probably 15. So, yeah, I've been 160 and up since I was a freshman or sophomore in high school. Mm-hmm. Seven years now, I think. It's Your body's crazy. used to it. Very used to it. But I'm at the point now where I can just eat 2,000 to 3,000 calories a day and be completely fine. Maintain that shape. Yeah. Ain't it weird how your bodies will do that? I think Because, it's... like, there for a while, I weighed, I know, 100 pounds. Crazy. Now I walk around, like, 145, and without even trying, I stay 145. But, like, before, I would have to try to get to, like, 115. Like, 115, I remember when I hit 115, I was like, holy shit, I'm getting buff. <laughs> bro, it, I think it's so weird. And it's like, nah, bro, you just becoming normal. I think it's crazy <laughs> like, how... You ain't yeah, buff at all, you just normal, man. Normal. I think it's crazy how you can just transform your body completely. Like, you don't even know... But it you... gets used to it. That's that's the thing I think's cool. well, Yeah, it's not going to just deflate. Like, imagine if you had 16-inch biceps right now. Like, how weird would that look on you? But it would maintain, so you just have to get used to it. Yeah, it's like your body just makes the adjustments, and now, even though you're not in the gym the same, you're not eating the same, you're not even doing the same things that got you there, your body just is accustomed to it, so it, like, does whatever it's got to do. Now, it will And, like, send it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll lose lose my new details. Exactly. You'll lose the shape. You'll lose the cutness. But you're not going to just drop 30 pounds. I kind of stay cut, like, 24-7. You don't... (laughs) You don't really serious, you don't drop dude, thirty lame. pounds in a day because you forgot to eat a meal. Like people are so brainwashed by that. They're like, if I forget one meal, I'm gonna lose all my progress that I've made in the past five years. Oh my god! No, whatever nice. got you there is what will get you away from there. So, 
it's not one meal that made you buff. It was like and it's not one meal meals. that's going to make you unbuff. And it's not one workout. That it's got not, you into shape. Yeah. And it's not one workout that's going to get you out of shape. It's the 365 days a year of the habits that you use that got you to that point. Yeah. It's the same thing with mindset. Anything. Like, yeah. That's why he's got his alarms. He's got... You have to listen to a thousand alarms a day or a year, probably. I mean, like, like for instance, let's talk about your TikTok. Like, people probably all the time are like, "Dude, you got like three hundred ninety or four four hundred thousand Or I'm, I'm not on TikTok a lot. I don't even have the app, so I, I I'm unfortunately not able to know your progress on there. Like, I don't know just where you're at. Get, I just want to know your point. My point, though. <laughs> I don't get to it. the point. <laughs> we got people listening. <laughs> my, my, the point is, is that I'm sure there's a lot of people who are like. How'd you get that? How, how, how'd you get that? You know, because they just think that, like, you just got it. Yeah, they're like, they'll, they'll say. Like, one video, and now you have, like, half a million now, followers. that is a thing. There it pe- is a thing. There are people who have accomplished that, but that's not how it works. That's but not how people also work. win the lottery. That's like, yeah. But more people lose it than ever that win it. Or more people don't have a video to back up their blow-up video, right? My see, people ask me like, bro, I've been. They don't have a second hit; they're a one-hit wonder, baby. They, they'll 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 ask me, bro. I've been posting, but it's so slow. Like, how did you blow up so fast? I'm like, I didn't. I didn't. Blow it up seems fast. fast to you because you wasn't the one posting the six videos that only got fifty views. Yeah, like you didn't, you <laughs> like, didn't see all the flops. You didn't see all the. And ideas I took that those down. Yeah, like, <laughs> exactly, dude. People will ask me how I blow up so fast whenever I'm. Very considerably, uh, not. Uh, I don't know how to say this. Like, I didn't blow up fast, but I stayed so consistent that every time you look at my page, it's grown a little, and you're just like, "Man, he's really good." Well, I mean, when you post three to four videos a day that are pretty original and good content, you know, people people like to follow it's, along with it's that. About it's the not content. the same thing every day. If I posted this. I, I know there's people who do like the day one to day 3,000 of those. And, and sometimes that works for them. I, yeah, it works for them. I could never, but, you know, I, people enjoy that. It's about that. personality. Yeah, it is. My Mine is really just my personality being brought out in my content. Those people are like mindset coaches, you know. They're teaching you to be consistent. And I've even tried to do that that kind of content with the motivation like, all right, day one, no, no, no. But I those could. videos just never... I would rather do it with myself. I don't want to post it on the internet. I'm going to do my day one to day 300 in my head. I'm thoroughly convinced, though, that, like, because I've, I've had some people, not that my stuff's blown up by any means. I mean, it's not. This guy. In comparison to you, bro, you have way more views than me. Okay, that might be true, but. You have way more yeah, okay. views. No, I do. I do. But uh, I'm. And, and way more like, followers. You're like two months in the works. I'm like. A year and a half in the works. Well, but but see, here's where the, this is my point. I'm glad you said that because people tell me that they're like, Sean, like, you blew a YouTube up, and like, I have a friend who was talking about it, and he's like, dude, you, like, overnight just blew that up, and I'm like, I've been watching his progress since day one. And I was it like, was definitely not overnight. Nah, bro. Like, I've been dude, doing videos you for were three so years. Excited. You, yeah, yeah, dude. More than that. Uh, Had to be more good. than that. If we really go back. I mean, okay, how about what if we go back before music, just creating content? Oh yeah, like if we go back. To I mean, it. I've been making videos for probably since 2010, honestly, but I've never like packaged it all together Not until structured. about 2020. Yeah, well, same here. I've been making videos since Dub Smash, and I don't even know if you know what that is. I don't. That's like when Vine was a thing, hmm. which died eight years ago. I made it? vines too, dude. That's what I'm saying. I've been doing this for so long. People are like, bro, how'd you blow up so fast? Well, I didn't. I took. I did the rush method. Like I, I figured something that worked <laughs> yeah. out for me. And, people well, like and it. when I first started doing it in 2010, like it's so funny because in 2010 I wanted to make online motivational videos that were funny. <laughs> so funny. That's a, that's what I was doing in 2010. Was just, mine was just creative videos that were funny. It had nothing to do with fitness, but it, it was just funny videos. Yeah, and so I did that, and I had a few that kind of took off a little bit. Yeah. And then it just kind of died out, and I just wasn't consistent enough. But I think, like, dude, if I would have stayed with that, yeah, you don't know. Been that's why people. Up. That's why people never know what the potential is because they're just like, well, it could be this, it could be that, but I'm just gonna give up because it's not happening yet. And then I would make videos for other things that I was doing at the time. So I've always kind of done it, but since 2020 is when like I started saying like I'm gonna 
but so when my friend was like, yeah, man, you blew that up in a month. I'm like, I did. It was a new channel. I did just start it, but like that's also three years of trying to make shit happen. <laughs> trying to light the spark. That gave me the, you, you know what I mean? I remember the like, first week, you told me, bro, I just started this secret, like, I just got this secret account. I've got like, dude, I, I started views like, on some of my videos. I'm like, that's good, man. 400 views. And then you're just like talking about the thousands in the next week, and then 10,000, 100,000. I was like, Wow, and then I found it, and then, you know, it just went up from there. But it didn't happen overnight. It wasn't one video. No, it was like a, a bunch. This was a bunch of videos. It was coll- it was exponential because your videos were like a spider web. People would hop to each one because they're all similar. And they all tell a little story. Yep. That's the thing that I realized is, like, I'm just telling stories. And now I'm convinced, like, dude, I, I got to figure out the sides of stuff that I don't know like filming and stuff like that because it does help that it, that like people recognize you know familiar things but I also have some videos where people don't know the people in them and they're still doing well you know what I mean so yeah. I don't know that it's like oh well it's because people know who that is it's like no like it I think like, it's like know? the storytelling yeah exactly it. it's interesting it's captivating and finding ways to tell stories. And then is, they, that might gain them new fans. I mean, you never know. The story could be so good, you're like, oh, I like this guy now. The most surreal thing, let me ask you this, because I'm early in on the journey. We, we said we'd have more of a motivational pod today, so I'm kind of amped up. Have you had, I'm sure you have, but like more recognized figures in the fitness industry, quote-unquote famous people, have you had them like share your videos, comment on them, stuff like that. So, How was that when you started getting that kind of stuff? So, happening? I think the first big account to do anything with my stuff was Gymshark. Gymshark commented on one of my videos. And then there was this account who, like, it was a, I think he was a friend Which of mine. Which Gymshark's huge. Yeah, I, I think he was more of a friend of mine at the time, like, before he blew up. So, like, this was cool to see him. He, he had eight, eight to nine million followers to probably tens of millions across all platforms he followed me back on tiktok i thought that was cool um but he followed you before he had the millions no no no. he followed me after he had the million so i thought that was cool but he's a friend of yours we're friends now well uh, but but not prior to that mm-hmm. oh okay got you i don't know i must have, i might have said that i might have said we were friends before yeah he, it, no, 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 that's no. what we're it friend, sounded like we're, we're friends now but beforehand like i knew who he was he didn't know who I was, but I watched like his old videos before he even had a name. That's um, cool. Well, I've met Seabum, but that doesn't really mean anything for the social media, other than the fact that like I think maybe, I met him too. He, we both met him. Yeah. Um, we made a video with him, but that was something I I can't remember. Joey Swole. I don't know if you know Joey Swole. He's kind of like the fitness Batman. He's the hero of the fitness industry. He tells people to. Be nice, you know. Be respectful. Yeah, yeah. He follows me. He's made several videos about me. So that's cool. I seen one that you posted one or that someone, I forget you said not how I thought I would get on this show, but thank you or something like that. And it was a video that you had made. Oh, there's one of one thousand. I, I, I know. I'm doing, doing it right it. now. I'm doing it right now. I just gotta stay on. Wake routine, up, everybody! Baby. I know you're going to bed. Okay. 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 So, but you were talking about like, um, it was like when you see a tripod in the gym and yeah. someone like posted that on like a show or something, I was like, this is why you shouldn't. Yeah. Uh, Greg Doucette. That? Greg Doucette, he's a popular fitness icon as well. And he posted my video on his YouTube. I was like, this is not what I expected at all. I didn't expect this to be, but yeah, that was cool. He's really funny. He doesn't know me personally at all, but I've watched his stuff for several years I've had I've honestly had a bunch of iconic names see my stuff and like it and maybe even like share it or repost, but the most notable things is when these big brands reach out to me and like give me offers. Yeah, yeah that's that's cool. what I care most about. Because, well, yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's the type of shit that'll change your life. Yeah, because like sure these big names notice me, but that doesn't that doesn't do anything for me other than like they just know I exist now. Yeah. Like, if, if a big name, like, if The Rock commented on one of my pictures, it's not going to give me a, a, a role in an action movie. If the studio reached out to me, that'd be a lot more awesome than The Rock 
reaching it's out. It's interesting to me. you would say that. You know, there was this old meme going around for a while, and it, it said like, "What would you rather do? Have dinner with Jay Z, or get like, what was it, three million dollars? Yeah, something like that. and people were saying the three million dollars because dinner with Jay Z, maybe he doesn't even care. Like, well, when I seen it, most people were saying dinner with Jay Z. And I'm just like, no, bro, the $3 million. Because if you take the $3 million and you invest it right, you could be business partners with Jay-Z. And that would be a lot better than having a dinner that he ain't never going to remember. You know what I mean? Yeah. Me- I'd rather have you as a business partner than I would Meeting as a Meeting an friend. icon versus Becoming creating one. an opportunity with an icon. Two different things. I think the dinner with Jay-Z, people are like, well, what if this, what if this dinner costs $1,000? Now, if it's free dinner, you might get some knowledge from him, and he might tell you some tips, but and he's not going to make $3 million on the spot. $3 million no. is going to make $3 million. No. And and success leaves clues. Like, you'd be better off to study the moves that he made and how did he become a billionaire His life and isn't study this, that. Is, his life isn't private. He has yeah. articles talking about how he grew success. Plenty. There's probably even, like, documentaries over him. If you had $3 million, you'd have something to do with it at that point. Now, yeah. if now if he offered you three million at the dinner, I, no, I'm just kidding. I'm get I'm getting out of my yeah, head yeah. out of that. But, but that's that's the point. Meeting an icon does nothing. Getting an opportunity from whatever, like it doesn't even have to be a big name. But I think like the reason I asked you the question is because now I'm getting like like I sent you a video of like some people repurposing my content. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's cool. That is cool. They support and it. the reason that it's cool is because, one, it shows me that people are seeing it. Yeah. And when people see it, opportunities come from people seeing it. Like, the yeah. more eyes that are on it, the more people's radars that this gets on, the more opportunities can be manifested when through that. When Gymshark commented on my post, um, I remember, like, several smaller brands reached out to me. That's cool. So, but Gymshark didn't, obviously. You know, they were just wanting to make a funny comment. But I thought that was the coolest thing. Is like, okay, so maybe, and that's the thing. If an icon does notice you, these smaller brands, you see it as like an opportunity because they're like, okay, well, obviously this dude just made him famous. And they're, well, that's at least that's what they Yeah, think. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, oh, well, oh, now he's, he's famous. The it. Rock yeah. saw that. And it's like, I, I got to reach out to him now. I got to take this chance. And that's usually how it goes. But for most cases, like, I made more progress with just posting funny videos, like, instead of making my videos about these people noticing them. Because you know how some people are. Yeah. They're like, they get a comment from Taylor Swift, and their next video is like, I got a comment from Taylor Swift. Like, what? And then Did all of their content front row seats just to continues to be about that. Like exactly. They're just trying to live off that 15 minutes yep. instead of creating new opportunities. Just like we said, like the problem with going viral in one video is is that you don't have a system built that continues to produce that. So then you just become a one-hit wonder. But the difference with a one-hit wonder video versus a one-hit wonder song is a song can eventually become iconic and classic, and so can the video, but... It's very far and few between. Like, there's a lot of videos that go viral, and if you go to watch them back, they're not as funny because it's like it was the time. The viral you know videos I mean? and viral music uh, debate. So, a viral song can be sampled hundreds of years past its, you know, time, and uh, you know that's your that's revenue right there. Like, mm-hmm. if your song is going viral and it's I being sampled, baby. I mean, sure, you know that song. Yeah, sure. That song came out before I I don't remember that song coming out. That was like three, bro. But the fact that I know that song and you know that song and there will be there will be five your, your grandkids know will song. know that song. And that's that that's, and that's the perfect example of a one hit wonder that continued to. How about somebody that I used to know? That is a real one-hit wonder. Goat Yay? Ice or... Baby is probably the best one-hit wonder example ever. Really? He had nothing else. What else he got? But how many streams is it, is it pulling now? Ice Baby? I think I think somebody that I used to know is the new king. Really? Is that a one-hit wonder? It somebody has like a billion I streams. But they've had other hits too, right? Goat Yay? Or Got Ye? Whatever. Goat Yay? <laughs> 
I don't know. I mean, they might have had a couple of their songs, but they ain't pulling numbers. But anyways, yeah. So, a viral video gets worn out. You can only see the same video so many times before it gets annoying. A song, on the other hand, is a lot different. Because that creates more opportunities for other people. And it's just an instant classic. You can sing along. And a viral video could be five seconds long, which is not enough to cherish. So, that ends that debate. Viral song is way more handy for you and better than any viral video. So 266 million on Spotify. And it's probably got a lot more on YouTube. I wouldn't plus, even look at Spotify because Spotify didn't exist when that song came out. Plus 87 or 81 YouTube. million. There's three different versions of this, Ice Ice Baby, so you have to add all the ones yeah. together. So you're you're at like 300 million right there. But like or a little over three hundred. Like I bet there's there's way more streams before YouTube even existed. Yeah, so that it has like four hundred and something million, and then that that was fourteen years ago. So yeah, that was still before. I mean, that was after Ice Ice Baby had already been out for like fifteen years, and it before probably YouTube. pulled a lot of streams. But now Goaty, Goaty with somebody I used to know. Yeah. 2.1 billion. Yeah, just not even comparable. What else they got? But they don't Let's see. Popular. I, this is why they're one hit wonder. 2.1 billion, the next one's 31 million. So, it doesn't Not even relevant. relevant. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, that's that's the new one hit wonder. Everybody that talks about one hit wonders, they think of somebody that I used to know. That Goody. song, I never skip it. If it's playing, I never skip it. It's just so good. And uh, that's what I'm trying to say. It's like... That song is so legendary. You can listen to that over and over, but it, what's a viral video? Think of 9 plus 10, 21. Charlie bit my finger. That's an old school one. Holy, I could not watch that right now, even if you paid me to. No. Oh, uh, the, the one that I could probably watch is the, the firework one, Terry. Terry what you doing, up. Terry? Back it up. Back what it up, Terry. Terry? <laughs> what you doing, what Terry? You doing, Terry? <laughs> Yeah, okay. see, that is a one-hit wonder video that I feel like you could play every 4th of July. I gotta see that, I baby. guess there are songs like that. I don't know. But there are not, videos, no one, yeah. No one's sampling. It's not really building a franchise. Or no, 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 no. The cool thing about it songs is that together. they could be remade, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. But they like, could be sampled. Iconic videos like that, you know, people reference them, so that's kind of like sampling, and it brings people together. But to end of the debate, Obviously, music is going to be better in the long term. Yeah, if you can get you a one-hit wonder song. That's how you get rich. It's hard to tour off a video. <laughs> Man, I was I was famous, so I'm, you know, off I, this five-second clip. I didn't really... And I'm hosting the club this weekend. Come buy a bottle. <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah, but with the song, like Lil Nas X. But with the song, like Vanilla Ice is going to be in our area in like a month. He tours off one song, bro. What? For life. Money. Okay, well. I'm going. I'm not. <laughs> not to hear that song. No, it's funny. People be saying he's the greatest white rapper ever. <laughs> hey, man. You know? He's not. No, no. Not, not even, even by a long shot. Not even in the top 20. Vanilla uh, Eyes? I feel like, like, yeah, no. Hey, but he's got that eyes eyes baby. Hey, he's got a nice ass baby. He made money off of it. He did make money. That's the what I'm trying to say. Is like, you could make a viral video and not make jaggedy squit off of it. Yeah, true. I mean, literally, you can notoriety is all you got. Your your public viral video could just be on some big platform that posted your video and went viral, and it's not even like you'd get none of it. I think you have to have a plan. It's like, what are you doing all this for, and why? Like, what's the point of it? Because if you don't know what you're doing, then you won't know what to do when it pops. But if you know what you're doing and you have a plan, then when it pops, that's it's all just part of the plan. Every marketing genius who... People call people... Pe- Whoa. OCD kicking in. It's crooked. The table's crooked. What? That can not matter. It. it didn't matter. I can't stand it. Okay, anyways. People who are called industry plants are usually just marketing geniuses, for one. An industry plant is someone who is, like, f- bought it. Like, all their followers are bought. All of their content is made with professional studios. All of it is just, like, just completely fake. Like, this person d- didn't deserve their fame. That's what an industry plant is meant to be, or said to be. But some people, like Lil Mabu, 
Remember you reacted to his song? No, I haven't. Mathematical Genius or Mathematical dis- yeah, yeah, disres- yeah. Disrespect? Mathematical ah. Disrespect. Is that right? Okay, yeah. anyways. People call him a, a industry plant, but the dude has videos from several years ago man- like saying that he's going to manifest being like on the billboard chart, and he did. He literally is just a marketing genius. He's not an industry plant. Everything like he has old videos that sucked. He has he probably has old music that sucked. He he worked hard for it, and that's like yeah. People say the same thing like when Jack Harlow not too long ago dropped that album and was saying he was the best white rapper or whatever since Eminem. And I've seen comments people saying like he's an industry plant. I'm like no he's not. What? Like there's videos of him rapping when he was 11. There's and songs sucking. of him rap, rapping and from not 2014 good. that yeah. sucked. Like, yeah, like, and no disrespect to him, he was fine in his way. He even says it sucks, but it's just yeah, like, he was he cringes when he butt. sees that shit, but he's not an industry plant. You're not I an industry people, plant people, if you've been making music for 10 plus years people, and finally popped off. They grabbed the word and they just ran with it. They just sprinted off yeah. with it. They're like, yep, I'm going to use this for anybody who's more famous than me. Now, don't get me wrong. He had a hell of a push with that that uh, second studio album when yeah. he had like the... It was an album though. Glamorous a song. Sample or whatever it was. What was you that? You think that was his push? I think Industry Baby was more of a push in 2020. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Line. That that was the beginning of the push. But when he had like the number one song with that uh talking about from the uh, AL, first class. Yeah, first class. There you go. Is that it? was when I mean, dude, that dude was everywhere at that point. Like he was like unescapable when he was dropping that album. And I, I mean, think that's where a lot of people were like, Yeah, he's an industry plant. He's everywhere. I can't turn on the TV. I can't like get on Instagram. Just I can't get on anywhere genius. where he's just, he's just there. That song but that's his team good. going like... That song wasn't even good. That's, that's his know team good saying marketing. like, wait a minute. He just had this huge song with Lil Nas X. Before that, he had What's Poppin' and Tyler Hero and, and things like that. Like People liked it. But it released is. that album. But now he's got this. Now he's going to release his second album. You know. And it was just... It was time. Because, I mean... Now, if he ever that's ha- not an industry plant. No, that's <laughs> like, a, not at all. That's a hardworking rapper. Yeah, is what that, that is. That's just work. Yeah, but people will always do that. They that's will. <laughs> they will. Um, they will underestimate the work that it took for you to get there. Yeah, because they see it as an overnight thing, and they will underappreciate the blood, the sweat, and the tears that you put in. Mm-hmm. And even if it and is, they'll laugh at it. They'll be like, "What are you doing, man? I'm, you know, I'm just..." And I'm sure talking. I'm, I'm doing this. He, he like, comes what? from Louisville, so let's not call him some like, like he had everything all at once. Like he had it all growing up, and it was easy for him. Well, Mobby, on the other hand, he actually did. Like the reason why his earlier, like his first songs were like high quality, is because of his parents. Like he has very wealthy parents. He's, he's just he's just living a wealthy life overall. Mm-hmm. But and that's why all this stuff is good. But he's, you still have to make a good song. Like you still have to have talent and marketing skills. But yeah, Jack Harlow on the other hand, he comes from Louisville, Kentucky, and I'm not saying that he was dirt poor, but I don't know if he I had think it, it was all. Like middle class. Yeah, he hung. Uh, he said he he says it in a lot of his songs and a lot of his. You can hear it in his voice. He's kind of he's got a little, not thug, but. <laughs> I don't know about that. No, he doesn't. He's, I'm not trying to say. That. I'm saying he's got. He comes from the verbs, you know. He's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He wasn't well rounded as a kid. But I think what we're trying to say is, is that like you know, people are gonna underestimate what it took for you to get there, and yeah. people are going to you know belittle the work ethic. They're they're gonna forget the weekends you didn't go out. They're gonna forget the nights that you stayed up all night. Yeah, the days where you woke up early after being up all night working on something like they're they're not gonna see all that. All they're gonna see is the success that you have now. But and the the comment section, they're gonna they're gonna see it and they're gonna comment the most hateful thing they can think of. But I think the difference between the people that are here today and gone tomorrow are the people who have a plan. Like I was I was recently studying Master P. Is that an album name? What here today, gone tomorrow? No. You sure? Maybe. Maybe. But regardless, I was watching some videos on Master P before you got here, and I always loved his videos. But like, one of the things I love is like when he had it, he had it. Like in ninety, I think it was nineteen ninety eight, which is a long time ago. But in nineteen ninety eight was like their peak year, and he had an independent record label, 
and that year they released like 28 albums and they all went platinum what <laughs> yeah bro like he I'll put it this way like his what? net worth used to be he, he ended up getting divorced and it like split it in half but his net worth was like 600 million from what? 1998 why bro I, why have I never heard of that 28 know. albums going platinum in a year but it wasn't all him he had his own record label like completely independent so like he and he had like a 90-10 deal so like he kept 90% of the profits and then the distributor kept 10 crazy bro but he had a plan like he he knew exactly what he was gonna do and then once he like (laughs) once he started putting out music they said it was like an assembly line for music like he just had artists he was just like they would record like 12 hours a day and he would send one artist in they do their thing he's like all right next they send it in like if you didn't have your stuff written you wasn't getting to record that day Dude, and he would feature each other on on the albums and all that. Like Man, it's just that's genius. Just, that's like he stuff had a plan. Like we got to get this shit out. So maybe their their record label was only like really popping. I think it ended about two thousand and two when all the kind of the hits stopped. But like from ninety six to like two thousand and two, they just went till they couldn't go no more. That's insane. Yeah, bro. I mean, that's what young boys trying to do nowadays. You just have to... Yeah, he puts out an album like every week. <laughs> yeah. They're not all going platinum, but he's also doing it on his own. Yeah, that's that that's remarkable. He's literally me. doing it all on his own. Like, when I see him, like, commenting off his YouTube channel on other videos, it's like, dude... Like, when we reacted to the Juice World freestyle, like, I saw he commented on it. And I was like, dude, that's cool. Yeah, he's just a normal guy. He's just reg. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, you, you said NBA. NLE is who I saw. Oh, uh, well, he's also... He's kind yeah, of the NLE, same way, right? He is kind of the same way. And NLE, he's he's like a, just a genuine guy. Like, there's nothing off about I like about NLE him. better than NBA. Yeah, but why'd you, why'd you think that NLE was dropping an album every week? Because it's just Young Boy. Yeah, it's just Young Boy that's that. Sad. But I don't the know comment, why. you saw the comment. Okay. The comment was from NLE. But NL. yeah, no, NBA is the same way, though. He's not like... I don't think he's big on social media, but like he's just like a... Like, he's not off-putting at all like most of the content you see of him out of music is just kind of like there's not he's not being covered for you know assaulting people you know he's not doing anything out of the norm or trying to be what people think he is you know he's hmm. just he's just a right guy and same same with NLE they're just, just regular dudes putting in the work that's it they're not like John Morant or do you think of like <laughs> you think of people like 3-6 Mafia now I know you've probably heard of who they are yes. I would assume yes. but I want they they were the guys who never had to remember Juicy J saying like they were like he was talking about the legacy of 3-6 Mafia and this is before now where they're like sampled all the time in the newer music and they're like you know they're Dude, heavily those influential beats, those beats are so iconic but it's like this was like in the mid 2000s when he was saying this and he was like you know our motto was always like we never want to just you don't want to just blow up because when you blow up it just fizzles out yeah he's like you just want to bubble and you just want to maintain that bubble and that's what we've done but that, so I from the early that. 90s till the group broke up in like 2006 yeah. they just maintained this bubble of influence and now the music's just iconic at this point like so the iconic. beats the so like like iconic. all that and there's so many people that sampled that music, that's used that music to launch their own careers. Like, it's incredible, bro. And like that's just that. them just hustling and just... And they were independent, so they were making a shit ton of money and just staying on the grind. And I love that mindset because I don't know if a lot of people get lucky with that. I think more people try that like they have that mindset until they just randomly blow up and then they're like well now what you know it hit them too fast they had the mindset of like i'm just gonna slowly grow i'm gonna slowly climb my way up and then all of a sudden they just go right to the top and then they're like "Uh uh-oh i didn't have this thought out yeah so what do you think they did different what do you think they're like thinking like is this song too good do we release it later (laughs) like this song might just be too good we just have to drop it I think kind of what he was talking about was it's just like we're not focused on we're not focused on like trying to make radio hits. We're not focused on trying to ride the new wave. We're just doing yeah, what we okay, do. Yeah, okay, so I was going to say they probably and don't follow it's a trends. slower build. Probably just unique. Yeah. 
be unique. And that's don't why, mark it, you know. And that's why people run. sample their music today, and that's why it's so iconic, because it doesn't ride a wave. It just is what it is. Like, they just make the type of music that they make. It's real grimy, dark beats. Like, sometimes it's a little uh, borderline corny with some of their songs. Like, like uh, That's My Baby Daddy, you know? <laughs> Stuff like that. Like, they have a song called Baby Daddy. It's kind of corny. But it's just the beat hits, though, bro. That's <laughs> like, what I'm saying. Those beats are so iconic. It's just like, yeah. Their and then rap like the, flow. Yeah, ho. Yeah, you know, like, that sampled in so many different songs. Like, it, it's just, yeah. Yeah. And it was just them being them and just being consistent in what they do. So, yeah. And what, that's it. So, what did you learn today? Did you learn to be yourself, be consistent? Uh, that's basically that's the pretty, I mean, that, that's... Be consistent. Be, be you, yourself and be consistent. Figure out what it is that you want to do and just do it every day. Have a plan. Have a plan. Have a routine. What are you going to do? Man, we always be tired. Because... Up. I know, I know, but but think about it. Like, if you don't know where you're going when you get there, then you're not going to be able to sustain it. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, like you got to know where this is going. That's why I love like the the idea of the manifesting, like the little Mabu guy or whatever. I'm, you know, I'm not on that that wave, but at the same time, I admire anyone who can be like, I'm gonna do this, and then they do it. And that's just that's setting a goal and accomplishing it. But once you accomplish that goal, you gotta have the next goal. What's the mm-hmm. plan? Like, what are you trying to do? What's all this for? You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. So yeah. That's been atypical. Podcast. I'm Sean. And I'm Cam. And we'll catch you next time. Hopefully.